What's going on guys? My name is Jeff and this is Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're doing a Worldwide Corals unboxing. What's going on guys? We're back with another video and if you're new to what we're doing here, this is where I talk about everything saltwater tank related. So if you love saltwater tanks like I do, gently press that subscribe button in the face. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be taking a look at a order I put in with Worldwide Corals and more specifically the corals that I got in that order. A couple months ago, I put out a video talking about my battle with rapid tissue necrosis. Well, a couple weeks ago, went to the local fish store. Things had seemed that they had settled down a little bit. Corals that actually were dying off started to grow back. So I went to the local fish store, picked up a couple corals, put them in the tank, and they actually were doing fairly well. So last weekend, I jumped on eBay and did some shopping with Worldwide Corals. So let's take a look at what came in the box. So, one great thing about Worldwide Corals is you get these packing slips and it has a breakdown of how much you spent, how many corals you have, and what I like about shopping on eBay with Worldwide Corals is it's all what you see what you get now if you were to do that on their website you are potentially going to pay a lot more granted the corals that they have on ebay versus what they have on their website is a little bit different you have a lot of their i would hate to call it a lower end coral on ebay they do have a couple gems in there uh, but for the most part the stuff that you're going to get on ebay isn't going to be as high end as the stuff that they have on their site and that's why they're willing to obviously sell that way uh, you can also combine from eBay and the website. So let's say you go in, scoop up a couple auctions, there's a couple corals that you missed, you go to the website. As long as you, you know, let them know, email them, tell them what you're doing, they will put everything together for you. The couple things I would mention out of that is that the shipping on their website is a little cheaper than what it is on eBay. You are going to pay the higher price uh, for the shipping. I'm gonna be doing a video in a couple of months I'm gonna do some more orders first, uh, but I'm gonna share with you guys, I'm basically going to give you a buyer's guide to buying coral on eBay. And I have a plan when I go there. Uh, it prevents me from spending way too much money. It also helps me scoop up some low, lower priced corals, I guess is what you would say. But every once in a while, it's nice to pick up a couple of nice pieces. So I really love the way that Worldwide Corals does this. They have their pictures so that you know exactly what the trade name of the coral is and it's easy to identify that coral makes it a lot easier overall all right so you have your packing slip has your price breakdown the corals that you got basically screenshots of everything uh, and the prices that you paid for those corals something that i like to do is i keep a journal for my reef tank and i usually will write down the date that i introduce these corals to my reef tank where they came from and that stuff so i can kind of keep a log as to where corals are coming from right here you have basically what happens if coral dies uh, and that kind of stuff it has their contact info and a couple different ways you can reach them. Uh, this is new, basically giving you a coral acclimation guide, so that's always good. It also gives you, that's awesome, uh, lighting and placement. So it breaks down where you want to put what corals. I like that a lot, that's awesome. So this is the tricky part, getting this out of the box without absolutely destroying it. Look at me go. So we have our cooler. I'm going to grab packing slip and let's cut this tape off. This cooler size is perfect to keep in like the trunk of your car or even in the back of your truck, uh, especially in the summer months and winter months when you go to the local fish store. So you can basically just take whatever you pick up at the local fish store, throw it in that cooler, you're good to go. Scarred mine up a little bit, but this is definitely gonna be going in the back of the truck. What Worldwide Corals does is they have all the little bags that are crimped in a big bag that's crimped, so it helps prevent any leakage. There is a little bit of water I can feel on the bottom of the big bag, but the cooler was absolutely dry. Very good packaging, uh, and I think this is a great way of shipping corals old school, and where there's no air, the corals don't really, and they're all packed together like this, there's a lot less probability of them kind of falling around. So we have our price point, and we're gonna kind of match them up with the coral that we got. This one looks like the high, high tide, nice little LPS coral. Then right here, this is the rings of Uranus frag. Looks a little pale. 
This looks like the Trident Acro. This is the Destiny Acro. Right here we got the chalice that I picked up. What was that called? Snagglepuss chalice. This looks like the dark side acro. No idea what that is. Saying it's number 12. Looks like I didn't get what you see what you get there. So this is the glow stick Hydnopora. Substantially different compared to what was in the listing. Alright, this guy looks like the Trix Color Acro. No, oh, I'm sorry, the Trix Tricolor Acro. Then we got the Death Punch Acro. This is the Buckaroo Acro. The Regal Pilati. And we got the Frog Leg Acro. So what I'm going to do next with these corals is I'm going to put them in my sump, not in my display tank because my light's just turned on. Very important to not have these sitting in light in a very small container because it can cause fluctuations in temperature within the container. So it's very important to keep it in the dark lit or even shut the lights off in your tank if you're going to put it, float it in the top. But what I'm going to do is float a few of these and then set up my dips. We're going to talk real briefly about some of the stuff I use uh, to dip corals and then we're going to get these guys added to the display tank. Okay so real briefly I'm going to talk about some of the items I use to dip corals. I usually have a couple of containers. Uh, one for the dip mixture, the other one to rinse it off because you don't want dip entering your display tank. If you do dip corals there is going to be traces of dip entering your system. The idea behind rinsing it before you put it in your system if, if there's anything on there it's going to rinse some of that off before it gets to that point next up we have coral dip now there's a couple different brands out there now to each their own in my opinion but for the the main runners i think the only one i don't have on hand is polyp labs version of dip but the main runners when it comes to coral dip is brightwell aquatics coral md emmy coral wash off and coral rx I also have the Coral RX Pro, which is a more condensed version of Coral Dip. Today we're going to be using the Emmy Coral Wash Off. I also like to have a couple of towels kicking around uh, when I'm adding corals to the tank. Uh, one for just kind of general cleanup as I go along, and then one to dry off my arm after I've been in the tank. Something else I usually like to have is a pipette. And what I usually will do this, I'll stir the water, I'll blow on the coral to get any debris or pests off from the coral. Uh, if you don't have one of these kicking around, you can also use a turkey baster. Turkey baster would probably even be better because it's going to move more water. I also like to use some coral glue. I prefer the gel. And this is when you're adding the coral to the display tank. Keep it in place so it's not getting knocked around. And then usually I'll have a couple of frag plugs kicking around. Uh, just in case if I take the coral off from the base. Alright, so I got some fresh salt water mixed up. And anytime that I have corals coming in, I usually mix up a batch of salt water. Anytime new additions to the tank, I'm going to be doing a water change shortly after. And I decided to take uh, some fresh salt water. This one is going to be my dip station. And this is going to be my rinse station. I'll put a towel in between them just so I can discern which from which and then I got a trash bucket for all the plastic and waste water. Coral wash off is 15 drops to one liter. I have about four ounces of water in here so quick math that's about two drops per ounce and I'm gonna go a little bit a little bit heavier so that's good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start grabbing some of these corals out of the sump, cutting them and I'm gonna dump the water in here Put them in there for about 10 minutes. I'm going to do two at a time and then rinse them in this container.
chalices tend to react pretty heavily to dip. They get a little upset about it. The one thing where I have two corals in here at the same time, it's gonna be very important to make sure that they don't touch, especially being a chalice and an acro. And then we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and we're gonna continue this process all through every coral. So I wanted to share with you guys what I picked up from Worldwide Corals, as well as go over briefly how I go about introducing new corals to the tank and eventually i will be putting together a video on coral placement within a reef tank you know hopefully all the corals do well and we don't have any more battles with rapid tissue necrosis if you guys want to take a look at that video there's going to be a link in the description as well as a more detailed coral dipping video and what i want to share with you guys is basically how i introduce corals how i get them into my tank and so you can take bits and pieces of it if you like the whole process you can apply it to your tank or learn from my mistakes and do the exact opposite so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you hit the thumbs up and now we're at that point in the video where we're going to take a look at our youtube random comment picker selector type thing so we can pick ourselves a winner who left a comment on last week's video hit the like button and is a subscriber of mad hatter's reef and this is all for a 25 dollars gift certificate to premium aquatics so let's jump into our random youtube comment picker so we can find ourselves a winner all right guys so we have our video loaded now it's time to hit the randomly pick winner button and jason park you have won yourself a 25 dollars gift certificate to premium aquatics Congratulations to the winner. Reach out to me and what I have found has been very helpful as of late is if you reach out via Facebook. Mad Hatter's Reef on Facebook. Jump over there, shoot me a message, and then we'll get that gift certificate out to you. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. We talked about what we got from Worldwide Corals. We did a little discussion about coral dipping. We talked about my battle with rapid tissue necrosis. Hopefully it is gone and resolved itself. And there's a couple different videos that are all touching on the subject as well so there'll be links in the description if you want to check those videos out that's going to do it for today guys i want to thank you for joining me i want to thank you for your support and i will see you next time right here with a brand new video